my friends, I'm happy to present my another lesson and we're gonna work today on another complimentary course, the last ones which is left and that's gonna be green which is gonna uh, be uh, received from yellow and blue and red. I even have red jacket today because red is really 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 powerful color and in a lot of cultures it's one of the color which is represent happiness beauty and i think that we're gonna work on the most beautiful part of the world which is flowers and we're gonna make them with red color uh so the lesson will be all um about the last couple of the complementary colors which is green and red and as I said, we uh, will try to uh, make the field of flowers today. Uh, I have the example in this picture, uh, which particular flowers we will uh, work on. It's going to be poppies uh, because they have that bright red color. Uh, or you can, you know, just make um, something which is you like but red color I mean uh, doesn't matter exactly which one like in this picture it's uh, hard even to say, uh, say uh, which particular flowers are there but they are red so uh, we just gonna uh, try to uh, create the beautiful field with the green grass and red uh, beautiful flowers and at the top of the picture will be the sky you can make few hills on a uh, kind of like horizon line very 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 far away and because we already painted with you our beautiful mountains last time we um will practice um put few hills on our picture too and the last uh lesson was about the two complementary colors yellow and purple and uh, we were working also uh, on the rhythm i was trying to explain you what's the rhythm you know uh, art and painting means uh compared with the music so uh today we're gonna use the same tools as we usually take for our lessons set of different brushes the crayon or any pencil you like uh, our favorite mixing tool palette uh, we will still work with two uh, jars of water today because we need the cleaner color for mixing the sky and uh, we need to actually keep the red color clean otherwise it's going to be turned you know some brownish dark purple color if we don't keep it clean so basically for our art station we're using the easel which is i have as my very convenient tool for set up my paper on this is the easel the traveling easel and my paper is right here and I usually keep it straight and uh, I, I recommend you before just to keep it on a notepad uh, when you buy it. But I use more rubber bands on the side to keep it straight and it um, will be set half vertically like a diagonal way on my easel so uh, I can see my picture more convenient compared with the horizontal layout so uh, this is my setup for today and as I said I have the Creole pencil which is red why not because we're gonna have filled with red flowers right so what I'm gonna do what I start with is gonna be my horizon line I like to start with horizon line because that help you kind of to divide your picture in the main pieces so my horizon will be somewhere here I will leave more room for flowers and field compared with the sky because it's nothing new about painting the blue sky we already did it in our first picture 
and uh, the main purpose of our, our lesson today is work on two complementary colors which is going to help us here on the bottom part of the work and I will create like few hills on the horizon like little slight hills not mountains but hills and uh, that's gonna be my valley right here full of flowers and this is gonna be the sky so basically it's very simple two hills or you can put three if you want you can make like one on the very very uh, close to horizon line and they will just kind of create the entrance in your uh, perspective going into deeper deeper inside the picture close to horizon and that's going to be our flowers a valley and this is going to be the sky uh, to put the flowers on the field I'm not going to worry about this too much because they just going to be the dots of the red color so uh, we just need to uh, create the few one on the front to uh, make a, a, a point on perspective why out so the things are in the front always uh, look uh, better and clearer compared with what going uh, to happens on the back of your picture. So first of all, I will start with my lovely big brush and I just gonna splash this with water a little bit and we'll start with the sky so uh, i like to start all my pictures always with the top of the picture because it's easier if you drop a few uh, colors or dots on your bottom part so that it's not going to be spoiled so you can always work on it the sky it's uh, usually the most light part of the painting if it's not the dark kind of stormy day uh, so we're gonna use first of all we're gonna use the white color and the white color will be the beginning of the sky so then we're gonna add blue blue like this and create the very very light beautiful blue with the white and uh, dark blue and we're gonna start with the medium body of the sky. So then uh, we will see how darker we have to go. So I will just paint with my vertical and diagonal strokes my medium part of the sky. And then I'm gonna use a little bit more white and Mix it in, in my light blue, make it even more lighter. And we're gonna do the more airy part of the sky, as we told before, that on uh, the close to horizon sky goes, uh, the lighter sky become. So we're gonna get a little bit more white and finish up the last touches to the over to the hills and then we're gonna create that beautiful light color full of air for the sky then I will add a little bit blue to make it a little bit more brighter so for the next top layer of the sky I make my sky very light blue because this is just the middle of the day where we went outside to look at our field of flowers. It's not the sunset sky, it's not the morning, it's just the middle of the day where it's usually a sky quite blue. And this is gonna be the darker part of the sky and I, I, I told you guys about this before that's uh, the sky above your uh, head usually the darker one and that's what we're trying to accomplish 
with changing of the colors because the darker color goes on the top of the sky in our picture too because we try to make it look like it can be in a real nature landscape Where I use the strokes are those kind of half vertical, half diagonal because it helps me to uh, create that translucence in air um, substance of the sky. If I will do the hori uh, horizon, for instance, uh, and the connection of the sky in, uh, for instance, ocean or field, I need more horizontal uh, <clears throat> horizontal or brush strokes because otherwise it's gonna be uh, looks like it's a vertical feature fixture or something which is, has tendency to be more vertical or uh, now we're gonna for instance do the heels and we're gonna change our brush for the medium and we're gonna use more horizontal strokes just to show that uh, heels are has more um, heavier and horizontal layout. So I took my medium brush and what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna use blue color first and put it next to my sky color right here and clean the brush very well uh, because as I told you white and yellow they're more gentle uh, colors and they get easy dirty so we need really really clean brush for it so I got as much yellow I can get on my brush and put it on the side don't put it next right away because we're gonna use it um, as we go creating that uh, beautiful green color so this is the yellow and we touch a little bit blue because uh, blue is really intense and yellow more translucent than white so just a little touch of blue, almost creating green right away. And that's what it does. So we're gonna be happy with this shade just for now to start with the front heel right here. And I will think that my heel are a little bit too light so i will get a little bit more uh, blue for it mix it well because otherwise it's just going to be separated on your picture and look like blue and yellow together um, not mixed that's why we have palette because that's what we do we mix colors we don't take them from the container we get the shade of the color we need for our task and for our composition and to create the beautiful picture so I get more yellow and more green and make that heel over here uh, I want to get a little bit of uh, more colder green the colder it gets is more blue it's getting mix just for the top of the heel over here you can tell it's kind of gonna have the smooth and nice connection to sky. I even use on my palette, if you notice, a little bit of the sky color. This is gonna add our green hue a little bit more air. Just like that. And next hue, it's going to be uh, the green color, but we're going to use a little trick. Uh, we're going to clean our brush and we can add a little bit of black. Why black? I will explain. Because as we spoke before about uh, black and white, they create basically similar to a uh, complementary color color shade of color but it gets some more 
deep shade over it. So for instance, if I mix together blue and yellow and put a little bit of black in it, you will see how it's changed the color. I will start with the skirts of this hill right here. You can see that the color of the shade of this green become more intense and change a little bit of um, color not it doesn't actually add the make doesn't make it brighter but it's changed the um, um, coolness or warmness of that so you can do it right on the same spot like for instance I started with the colder shade and I add a little bit more yellow in that and it's become warmer but not like on this hill it's still a different color so it's hard to uh, realize that on the first few artworks we do right now but later you will see the difference uh, between the colors which is mixed without black or white or with them so they change them uh, they're never going to be the same after when you add them in it so be careful with black and white white is easy to change but when you add black it stay it's it's very hard to change that so i still need more blue to finish my hill and now i'm gonna add white and you will see what the white will do This is the mix with a green color, which is made from blue and yellow, and we add a little bit of white in them. And we use it for the farther hill, which is we have really, really close to horizon, right there. I even will add a little bit more blue and white in that and then yellow on the top to make it really white just to show you the difference see this is it this is that light blue and yellow very light green you will see when it's uh, a little bit more dry here because acrylic colors they have tendency to become lighter as we spoke before so this is my lighter heel and i will stop on this heel because that's not the main uh, character of our work so we we'll just need to create some deepness in our work with that white color so what i'm gonna do next i will get uh, some yellow and mix it with blue i still have a little bit of white left on my brush i that's i did it on purpose i didn't wash it because i still use this for my mix and i get that cold green color which is i'm going to use cold it's the reason why i call it like that because it has more blue and blue it's a cold color it's another characteristics of the colors which is we will talk later about this more for now i'm just telling you that if it's more blue it's a uh, more colder color if it's more yellow it's warmer color so now we're gonna make it yellow and we're gonna add yellow and make it warmer for our layer of here like that because this this heel is closer to us we want to add more color and more details in that to kind of bring a bring this heel closer to the people who will look at your picture and kind of compare that with what they see in nature and if you notice uh for for this skirts of the hills 
I'm using the half vertical strokes again because if here I use kind of more horizontal kind of master the shape of the uh, our heels but now because it comes closer to the field I will kind of use the vertical short strokes to create the layers of the grass on the heel and we're gonna stop here first of all because we want the heels are dry and see which one we need to uh, add some more color to get some more brightness and vivid, uh, make the colors more vivid on that and uh, second of all we need to work on our flowers first and then we will work on the green again to create the space between flowers uh, as it goes with the grass so i need the different brush for that i will leave this brush on the side and i will get the smaller brush just like that for the beautiful flowers we're gonna make but this we need red and red is going to be the main character of our field of flowers one more time what we gonna create we're gonna create this beautiful field of flowers and i will start with the dots i'm gonna make a lot of red dots on the heel just like that and as farther my flowers go the smaller dots i will make so they will spread on the field like this and the closer our flowers comes to us the more bigger spots we will make So the clothes right here, they almost become three times bigger than on the line of the beginning of the field, on the other side of our work. The reason why we're doing that, because we're trying to create 3D from our artwork, illusion of it, and uh, the one on the technique of create this illusion of the reality we change the sizes and shade of colors so i'm going to add to my red now a little bit of white so the white will make this color red color lighter as it always goes like that right and this lighter on spin color we're going to use for farther flowers on the heel I recommend you if you have questions of how to do something uh, watch the video again because I'm trying to uh, give as much tools and advices to you as it goes on our painting that's the reason why i paint with you together uh but if you still uh, don't understand a few things because i do have a second language uh, english is my second language and if you don't understand something you you can watch my video again if you still uh, don't get the idea you can send me the question uh, and i will answer your question if i can or maybe mention something in next lesson what somebody didn't understand so that it's going to be kind of like a feed feedback and i can see where we are it's like a test in the schools we're not going to do tests because this is our hobby and um we don't get the degree from that but uh, we can do some improvements uh, all the time so I get uh, this pink flowers around so now I need to make my red darker so what I'm gonna do I will use black now and the black as I told you make the colors change the, their personality so it become more darker so I will use my red with black 
and the red and black will give you that burgundy color kind of like my shirt uh, and that burgundy color will give some fullness of our colors because if you saw uh, poppies in the nature it has uh, a little bit of darker middle in them so that's we're gonna kind of master that use that darker spot darker spots on our flowers will give more representation of the flower give them more fullness and create their look they're not flowers yet but they will be it just takes time and takes colors to create them and as i told you the closer to the front edge of the picture you get it's our beginning it's where we stay if we will go and make a picture on a real field and uh, create this from nature that's where we will see we will see more details in our flowers uh, by our you know, lower toes where we stay and the farther we will look toward to the hills the less details on our flowers we will see that's how it works and this works about, um, actually everywhere like that for the cityscape for the countryscape for painting still lives for anything painting people the farther you see the smaller objects become that's the perspective rule and what i'm doing now i'm creating my flowers on the front more active by color and more detailed compared with what we will see farther we go on our picture uh, the, the, the smaller they will be and lighter so far i have the full red color on them This is fun to create the petals on the flowers. I feel like impressionist. Impressionist and um, a little bit pointillist. This is two type of art technique, which is in 19th century, some artists create in France and this become very popular around the world. We will talk about this more. That's my favorite artist, impressionist and post impressionist i'm not really in a pointillism because point is uh from french it means dot so i don't like too dirty pictures because if you create your picture it looks like mosaic um just from dots you kind of get a little bit get lose yourself in that because it's hard to transmit your passion to the very very stricted tools and techniques so i think that you can use it sometimes but don't really stuck with that especially when you just started it's gonna restrict your abilities to have fun and create something that you're passionate about so but i use this dots because this is my flowers and i don't see another way to make them except using that dot techniques to show where they are so I just play with that so as far as goes it's more abstract it's become abstract is when the subjects are lose the shape accepted in society as the shape of a particular object so we're just gonna use the little dots for our flowers so now i think that we can stop for now with the flowers and come back to our heels with a small brush just clean it very well 
and kind of like last time we did with mountains just to clear the details with the mountains uh, i will get a little bit more green color for this i mix my blue and yellow and um see where i can improve my shield and my heels i think that i can improve a little bit here and maybe get a little bit darker shade of green for the skirts on these heels i like that uh, color over here the black and blue and green um i will try to repeat that shade uh, just to get a little bit more color on that heel so um this is the borders of it so i don't like that white spot there of course like i always say that doesn't look that it belong to that spot and i add a little bit more color on this side of the heel that's kind of cold green and then i will add a little bit yellow on it because the next layer of it it's warmer so i'm just gonna follow that And uh, for the farther one, I will use some lighter shade of green. Just to improve a little bit. And uh, I want them to lose that translucence uh, because I kind of like that little light yellow spots. Uh, so we're just going to keep it the way how it is. Uh, what I add, I just add a little bit more brightness to it because this is the pieces of uh, very, very heavy structures. Uh, it just can be translucent like sky, for instance. It has to have more color just to show this is made from rock. The heels are its surface and it has the darker green grass on them. So it can be too light. Again, we don't talk about the light comes from the sky because that's going to be later. For now, we're just following the task with the mix of complementary colors, green and red. So, but I really have temptation to leave it here like that. So it's kind of divide that hill. So give it a nice break to it. So, and I'm gonna use the little bit more brighter color here to create um, the difference between the farther hill and front hill like that. All these little tricks with shades, later on when they dry, they will work for us as the as we go we create that shapes and colors of these heels and uh, the more brighter shades helps to add a little bit more structure in them and make them less translucent I think that so far we can stop on that one and I will add a little bit more bow on the borders between that heels. I'm just gonna use a little bit bow from the previous sky color of 
for this heel right there because I don't like that it doesn't have the difference in colors we need them because otherwise it's hard to say that that's not a heel I look almost like the same heel but we will work on that when we come back to it so now I just want to leave it like this and start working on green for the field the of color for the field will be a little bit different because the way how the lights are uh, lie out um, on the particular surfaces surfaces uh, it's different for instance because this field is lie out is the flat structure and the heels has vertical more vertical tendency to be uh, or represent to the lights and even if we don't talk too much about lights but this I will use for creating the green color that's why I stop on that right now because we need the color shade of this green which is going to be different compared with uh, the color of the hills it has to be lighter because it's received from sun more lights because it's flat so uh the everything which is flat usually and turn turn over to the sun lights sun rises it's received more light so it's become lighter so i will start with except the shady spot but we're not talking about shady spots we're talking about the just the open space so i'm gonna create the very very light green color almost like a scissor saw color of the green yellow a lot of yellow in there so and i will with my smaller brush i will work on my grass so i need you to see that better so just like that I will start with the farther part and then uh, I will kind of uh, go around my dots don't try to cover them because if you cover them your flowers kind of like will sink under that um, yellow yellowish green color we don't want them to get lost in they kind of on the way they are gonna be lost in between of this grass but we still want them to have this red color because this is part of our task we are working with two complementary colors green and red and then by the way how it goes we're kind of trying to use that daddy but um together connected together uh, strokes we don't uh, take our brush from the picture if um, if you remember when we were working on flowers we just did the short dots uh, in a different spot now we're working on our green dots light green dots but they are connected so they kind of goes on the little dancing brush with our brush we're just dancing with the brush between that red dot and that's how we cover our field I will add a little bit more brighter green as farther we're going from the horizon line toward to the front and it's gonna be darker not too dark but just darker than it's on the connection of the skirts of heels just like that I will 
it has a little bit more yellow and a little bit more blue now we just don't do anything else but just dancing between that pretty red dots creating the field with flowers it's okay sometimes to give a little bit lighter yellow even between of your darker ones because this is all about the light we just fly out on the surface of this field and the grass can be a little bit lighter a little bit darker depends on the particular parts of this field so there's gonna be no mistake to have the varieties of this green but don't just paint too dark yet on the middle of the field we're using kind of darker color but not too dark we still leave that pretty scissor salad color with lots of yellow and less blue and we just keep going with them having fun with this dancing strokes of our brush If you still have little white spots, don't worry about this too much. We're gonna cover them later. Don't be too persistent on that because that's gonna kind of make you feel boring that you're doing the not very fun part of your artwork, but it's still fun because you're still working with the different shades of the screen and you creating that. And it's not like you're taking that from the can. You are the one who making that. And if the beauty of it, this is will be only yours color because that proportion you're using, they are unique, that which is make your artwork unique. So be proud of yourself and have as much fun as you can. I even um keep. I even gonna keep a little bit of uh, unmixed blue in that. So you have my permission to not really mix that together on a front because it's okay for this particular part of the field because it can be still some shadows of flowers. So I'm just gonna uh, keep that green uh, in different shades. Uh, some of them has shadows, some of them are straight exposed to light. So it's nothing wrong with that. And cl cl closer we come to the end of this side of the field, uh, more brighter and intense our green become. I even gonna use a little bit of shade of that black I have over here. I'm gonna add a little bit more to create that darker green for the front right here. See that black add more value to this green just like that a little bit more dark color dark green color I use black and I use blue and I still need more yellow but I need to wash my brush before I get the yellow in it put it on the side so it's gonna get too dirty and not gonna make my color too light so something like that will work and yep it is a good color I like that so then it's gonna be our end of the field right here I will leave few spots here because I want to add more red flowers but with more details 
so that's why I'm not covering the whole particular spot because I, I, I want to add more red in there. When we will finish the field, you will see how this red poppies will bright this field up because they are complementary. They complement the field and they complement this field with color. You can use this uh, color theory not only in your artworks but in real life with the clothing choices and also with your interior decoration in your houses or at work if you always will remember that complementary connection between colors you always can uh, make your design or your outfit looks more vivid and interesting and make you stand out because color theory is actually a very powerful knowledge about how colors in nature connected to each other and you can see that in nature sometimes how they complement each other even if there are color choices for animals and for birds colors And a little bit lighter for that part of the bottom. I even will take a little bit of white for that. To have the very light color for that side of the bottom of our fields. It's become the poppy meadow. And just cover a little bit more with that all light green your empty spots in here. And maybe leave a few uh, white spots just to add more flowers. Now I'm gonna work on the flowers a little bit, let my green dry. Uh, there's only one thing um, before this yellow green dry, I will use a little bit of this light color on the side of this hue. Because I still kind of don't see the difference between that hues. I don't know what happens, but it's kind of not really obvious difference. So I'm just going to add this color. To create the right shape of this heel like that okay and then I wash my brush very well for the red colors get more red on my palette and play with that a little bit more I like I promised to you I will get some more flowers in the front
what you do on the front you kind of go by the way how petals are go you can just add some color in going around the middle of the flowers like go around the rosy about the center of the flower and add some petals on them that's gonna add some extra color and extra shape to that flower because you kind of painting the a flower by using the color and making the shape of that flower make this more brighter and bigger as they are will be in nature And now uh, I will add some pink in my flowers, so I will add some white in my red for the farther dot. Don't go with too much details because these flowers are going farther, so it's less details you make when they go farther from you just to create that illusion of the going far away perspective. I need a smaller brush now, even smaller than that. Just for a few details I want to make. So I get a lot of white and use a little bit of this red and create some very light pink and just keep it pointy like that and just go around where I see the white spot. And add some that pretty pink color to my flower. Even if you hardly can see all uh, these dots on the field, this actually that's what we need, that impression we need, because they kind of sink into the field of flowers. So when we see them, we see them. If we don't see some parts, they just in the grass. So don't worry about this too much. And then I will do a little trick because I will use a little bit of yellow in my red not to make the orange but make the brighter red because that's what you can do if you don't mix too much uh, uh, in yellow and red it still will remain to be the red but it's just gonna be a little bit lighter shade more like scarlet if we use the Cadillac color now that's gonna be scarlet and the terminology of shades of colors so it can be called a little bit warmer color warmer red and this can help us to create the, some more vivid shades of this poppy because they in nature they 
more orangey so we just use the red part for creating our complement component complement to the pink color but they have this orange in their petals so we just try to bring it up When you use this kind of brush, don't push on that too much because then it kind of fail to undo the smaller strokes. It's become like a little bit sideway layout stroke. So we don't want to push on it too much if we still want to have the nice dotting. So doing the same on doing that bright red use for my front flowers give them that fullness color fullness And with this variety of our red shades, it's the same as the keels. We just make them look a little bit more vivid and looks natural and it looks like a nature. And uh, give your picture more professional look. As more shades of color you use, the more professional your painting become. Because this is like a language, the art language you uh, learn that on the way you go how to express yourself with the more tools and these tools that's what we learn right now how to use your tools and theory to create the beautiful work it's the same as the, any other profession right you have to learn how to do things before you become professional. Nothing different about the artist. You become artist when you look at this something and you want to deliver this impression to somebody. Like we spoke on our beginning of the hour lesson. But uh, to learn how to do it more effective, that's where you learn about color theory and techniques just to make it look more professional and more interesting for people to look at your work okay so this was the dots with the uh, red and yellow and now i will use the black dots uh, with the that tiny red to uh, create the little part of the poppy because they have that brightness in the middle so uh, only not on all of them but some of them which is closer to you because this is kind of well just make them a little bit more look like flowers not only dots dots are fine nothing wrong with dots but it just bring them a little bit closer to um, our end of the picture and to over to the people who look at your work to give you more perspective on that and i think this is going to be enough for this black and i will just use a little bit of yellow color just for few few dots of yellow on a few flowers on, on the closer part of our picture close to us and this is just the one of the elements on poppy flowers it just has in the middle a little bit of yellow to
so that little details and colors just gonna dry up your picture a little bit so then uh, I put my little tiny brush away and I get this little medium almost small one but a little bit bigger and flat I like flat ones because flats help you to keep your brush stroke straighter the round brushes they very tricky they might change the shape of your stroke so what I'm doing now mixing a little bit of green color to do some final grass dots around the flowers just to cover it up the extra white spots because that's going to close the gaps between them and uh, bring the brightness of the colors because when they compete with the white it's actually that competition flowers will lose if it's a lot of white around them this is why it's so important to get the finish touch on your field now it's white or green i always mix with white and a yellow to close the gaps between the flowers and even here on the borders on the heels there will be nothing wrong with um, adding some layer here of the grass to contact that so now we're going to use this closer to the front end and this is gonna be some few strokes of this green between the flowers kind of closing on these white spots it's important because that kind of shape up our flowers better because with the gaps between the colors it looks more unfinished and the colors lose that complementary complementary task which is we give them because they are our complementary forces for the green and also on the front i will add a little bit more brighter green just to finalize my front of the picture because i was under the easel holder and i didn't finish there the grass and that white color really compete with my flowers on the front and I don't like that okay so this is it for the front and now we're just going to kind of look at our picture and analyze where we should add a little bit of color. Are we good to go? Let's see. Uh, I think that a little bit of green, a little bit of hurt to put over here on the skirts of this heel just to get some fullness of that. Because here was like really, really light. And it can be like that because as we spoke before on the beginning i told you that the layout of the heels uh, make them kind of less highlighted by the sunshine and light so that they will be for this reason they will be darker only for that reason not because the grass there has a different color it might be the same 
alpine grass but we just expose more our field to sunshine because it's lying down flat and the hills are more vertical so that's why it's important to cover them with um, more intense colors so as we did on that hill for instance and that hill reminds me it's dark for that reason and it's also have the duty to be that farther color for the heel and that's by that front heel so that's make your artwork more full of colors going toward to the horizon and make a difference in lights and forms shapes of them and that hill which is far far on the horizon i will add a little bit more bluish shade on that just to kind of bring it down to the hill it has some translucence which is i agree with that because it's farther so and it has a lot of air in it so but for this reason it's okay to be a little bit lighter and here i'll just add a little bit more color on that side of the hill and kind of correct the shape of it so and just like that we're gonna leave heels alone and what i'm gonna do the, the last few brushes stroke i will apply on that in the between shape of the grass just to cover up a little bit flowers as i said um because the light really disturb the complementary color for the field into the red and uh the last thing i think that i can add a little bit red on my flowers just just a tiny highlight somewhere and uh, this is gonna be it for today one second last um final touches And I can leave it like that. Our task is complete. I just want to show you and tell you a few words about this work. So what we were doing, we were trying to recreate the field of flowers, red poppies or any red flowers you can think of. And for our composition, we use some heels the green hills far far away the blue sky or like a middle of the day condition and the field the light green field because it's exposed to sun much more than hills on the far far away part of the picture and i use the red color to um put some flowers on my field this is poppies they're red and i use few shades of red um, more burgundy and uh, more uh, kind of lighter 
red with pink shade and uh, more orangey with yellow so and that's kind of give these flowers a little bit more life in the petals uh, and this was task for complementary colors red and green the green we mix from yellow and blue and red is another green color and with this uh, task we finish our uh, first uh, model of our classes which is was dedicated to the complementary colors and uh, next it's gonna be different we're gonna work more on rhythm and that's our next lesson will be about thank you for listening and have a wonderful day bye bye